Hello and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blog cast, the podcast. My name is Emily and I am happy to be with you, uh, even from a distance, right? So I'm talking, but you'll get it later. It's like leaving you a voicemail that is a little bit long. <laughs> One of those like sweet rambly voicemails that that actually has a point. Um that's, that's, maybe that's how I should like elevator pitch my podcast. It's like, it's like a voicemail that you get, like one where you, uh, there's a point and they leave you a thing. Yeah. See this, you can tell why I'm not great at elevator pitches. (laughs) I am not built for marketing. And in fact, that is a little bit about what this blog is about here, but it is a, a world of elevator pitches. Is it not? It sure feels like it is. Um, so the name of this this blog is I'm Not a Productive Member of Society and I Have No Worth. Now, before you leap to my defense against myself, you should know that I know this is a lie. I'm being deliberately provocative here. On good days, I see myself as incredibly productive and worth a whole lot. But... There are days when I feel the capitalist values beating against me a little more strongly than others. Capitalism says that the way for me to be a productive member of society is to make a lot of money, a lot of capital, which I should then spend. Or if I don't create capital, I should be productive by providing my labor to someone who is doing some capital generating. I don't do any of this and am, therefore, an unproductive member of society. When productivity means money, which it usually does, I am very clearly not productive. But there are those who define productivity in the sense of producing stuff. In this sense, I am in a very productive stage of life. I may not be contributing capital, but I have, this last year or so, put forth into the world five albums worth of music, several plays, two podcasts, a novel, and a multitude of blog posts. By sheer volume of creation and production, I'm one of the most productive members of society that I know. But not one of those things earns me a salary or makes a profit, so I'm not worth anything. If you measure by money and not ideas, I am worthless. This is why I don't measure by money. I have zero net worth. By your usual American standards, I am not a valuable member of society. Neither is any other struggling artist. But I hope you realize how ridiculous this is. Do we only value a work of art when it makes money for someone? There are some for whom that is true. I happen to think art is worth something separate from how much money it can bring in. If you've gotten this far with me, I'm guessing you think so too. It's not just art that's worth more than money either. Raising one's own children might get you a tax credit, but it's not money in the bank. In order to get that tax credit, you have to make some money elsewhere. The multitude of caretaking jobs that are unpaid or underpaid are overwhelming. Can we call someone who cares for their sick or elderly family member unproductive? Worthless? When we value productivity and net worth above all else, that's what we do. Then, too, when we extend this idea out to its natural conclusion in the other direction, we're looking at many, many productive people who are actually quite destructive to the society, culture, and or the planet. Guys selling subprime mortgages were extremely productive if we define productivity financially. They made so much money. And they destroyed not only many people's lives, but also the world's economy which led to destroying even more people's lives. Someone happily at home taking care of their children isn't looking so bad now, is it? I'm not trying to take down capitalism. Couldn't if I tried. But I came up with this title, and therefore this whole piece, on a day when I was feeling a sense of shame about my life and how I've chosen to live it. On a better day, I recognize what a load of crock it is that we define productivity and worth financially. 
I'd love to see some way to embrace some of the other measures of productivity and development. If we had a universal basic income, for example, and we weren't so worried about finding the money for essentials, we might discover a world of possibility for things created outside the realm of the financial demands. Scientific discoveries could expand tremendously if they weren't tied to a need to make money for the companies that fund them. In other words, if we worried less about being financially productive members of society, we might be able to be actually more productive. We could make more things, discover things, create things, contribute love and service, make an exciting, artistic, scientific, thrilling world of art and love, not just money. I have seen many an artist twist themselves into knots trying to demonstrate the more socially acceptable forms of productivity, while their artistic productivity languishes. I'm not talking about the day jobs we do to survive. I'm talking about busy work. I'm talking about feeling like I should be writing emails instead of writing a song. I'm talking about feeling like I'll be a better person if I just do more tasks that might, one day, relate to money or a job. For my own creative practice, I have seen that the less I worry about my productivity in a capitalist sense, the more productive productive I can be. In other words, when I can joke about not being a productive member of society and having no worth, when I can embrace a sort of anti-productivity stance and start to scale my worth differently, if only in my own mind, I find that I can actually access creativity in a fuller, more wholehearted way, which births many creative children that would not have otherwise been born. That's the kind of productivity I actually value. That is worth a great deal to me. So that's me being productive. <laughs> Here I am being productive. I am in this moment being productive. I am making a thing um, for you. So uh, it's not going to make me any money, but um, I feel like that's cool. I mean, it would be nice to have money. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, at some point, I would like to have some at some point. Uh yeah, if you if you feel like you're like, hey, I believe in capitalist uh, support of p products, and I want to give you some money, y you can do that. Uh, I, I'm on PayPal, <laughs> Patreon, and membership model coming, and but I'm on it now. So you know Emily R Davis on Patreon. I mean, I have a lot of thoughts. Uh, about patronage and um, product. It's coming. I have a lot of <laughs> the, 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 pa the, the, the conference, the, the Patreon conference really got my head in a spin about art and creators and creatives and uh, exchange and whatnot. Um, yeah, so I, I I haven't been able to like force those thoughts into a um, coherent whole yet, but I'm I'm working on it. Um, it's tricky because I really do think I I am I'm resistant to any kind of capitalist push, which is basically I think where Patreon is is headed. Like even their tagline has now become something about helping. Um, creative people with their businesses. And I'm like, this is not, what I'm doing is not a business. Yes, it, it you know, writing the blog does a, make me a little bit of money, but I don't see it as a business. And maybe it's, that's just how I have a strange relationship with capitalism and language. Anyway, I'm sorting it out. But meanwhile, I do have to eat and, and food costs money. So... It's complicated. <laughs> but I, I'm here advocating for art, for, like, non-productivity. And if you're an artist, I want you to take a day where you don't, where you're not productive. Like, just 
that's what I want for you. I know not everybody's going to give it to themselves, but it, it, I think like there is a certain value in um, idleness, especially for artists, but I think for everyone, there is a certain, like that's where thought starts to get in and that's where, we, that's where creativity happens is in those moments where you're like just spacing out, like we should all get to space out more. <laughs> anyway, I got, a, I got a lot of thoughts and I'm spewing them at you right now. <laughs> uh, so, um, in the interest of um, my non-productive self, um, I thought I would put a worthless song here. Just absolutely worthless. Um, and I'm being a little facetious. Because um, I wrote this song for my friend's child, who is adorable. Um, and... You know, I think the lullabies in general are like one of those things that, you know, are written to be meaningful to a particular person and then, you know, become meaningful to other people as well. So lullabies I wrote for for my friend's children years ago are are also like the, now that they're out in the world, they're, they're they've become meaningful to other people's children. And like what what's more important work than helping a child go to sleep? You know what I'm saying? I mean, at least when you're a parent, I imagine that's the most important work in the world. Certainly, it feels like the most important work if I'm babysitting. I'm like, the most important thing right now in the entire world is getting this child to go to sleep. So, anyway. Uh, so, this is a new song. This is a new lullaby. Um, I have been wrestling a little bit with a couple of the lyrics, but I think I have settled on these now. Um, and I sent it to the parents um, not, not long ago. So you may even hear it before they do. Um, but we'll see. Um, but it is called Ruben's Lullaby. Ruben likes to grab things and Ruben likes to crawl. Reuben likes to climb things, which means he sometimes falls. But Reuben climbs back up again. He'll give you a big smile and then he'll reach out for his moms for comfort and for calm. Reuben likes the chickens and Reuben likes the eggs. Reuben likes his brother even when he pulls his legs But he knows when he's had enough He'll move away if it gets too rough He'll reach out for his moms for comfort and for calm And Reuben gets tired and sometimes he cries And face tells you it's time to rest his eyes and sing him Reuben's lullaby Reuben wakes up happy and he sleeps happy too there's sometimes when he doesn't, so he'll stay awake with you. But everyone needs rest sometime, even boys who like to climb. He'll reach out for his moms for comfort and for calm. And Reuben gets tired, and sometimes he face tells you it's time to rest his eyes and sing him Reuben's lullaby. Now Reuben, you're tired, you've climbed and you've cried. The look on your face says it's time to rest your eyes and listen 